Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on a very special fragrance. It's from the brand The Harmonist and it's Sacred Water. Now, I do have a few things to talk about with this fragrance. It is something that is supposed to be captivating, essential, mystical, something otherworldly to some degree. So it's definitely an avant-garde conceptual fragrance. I definitely wanted to get into the fragrance in and of itself and talk a little bit about the brand. So if you're interested in this fragrance, then keep watching. Now, I normally do not do this. I try to educate myself and research myself on a house, on a brand, on the inspiration behind the line, but there is a lot, and I mean a lot, that is going behind this entire line. So I have the name of the person who started it right here because I will butcher this name, so I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. Uh, the creator of this house, or this boutiques in this line, is Lola Karimova. Tilieva, and she basically wanted to create a line of fragrances that were harmonic, that were um, spiritual and mystical, and were centered around, um, if you could consider fragrance being feng shui, feng shui. Now, I originally read an article about this house when I was um, it, researching conceptual avant-garde fragrance brands back in July and Vanity Fair had an article on this house and I was immediately intrigued and really excited but her fragrances are not cheap <laughs> so I was unable to um, get a fragrance or purchase samples or get samples I forget if the samples are free or not or if you have to contact them and pay for them I am unsure at the time of this video but I'm going to link all the information below but I wanted to say is, is before you go into this video, I would highly recommend pausing this video and reading the Vanity Fair article because that will help you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from when I'm reviewing this fragrance. Because this is a conceptual fragrance, because this is an avant-garde fragrance, because she is coming at this from a little bit of a different way, I would like you guys to have a little bit of background because some of the things I'm going to say about this fragrance are going to sound weird. <laughs> but once you understand where she was coming from and everything like that, I think it would be, um, it would help you guys out. It helped me out a lot because actually when I got this fragrance and I was smelling it and wearing it, I actually reread the articles. I went to her website and everything kind of like went clicked back into place when you kind of get all that. I know it sounds really weird to say that. Please excuse me while I get comfy. But I just, I feel like if you guys want to learn about this brand, it is an avant-garde brand. I feel like it would be in your best interest if you're really truly interested in it. If you don't care so much and you just kind of want to listen to a review on a fragrance that maybe you haven't heard of, you don't need to. But if you're a little bit more interested and want to know why this fragrance smells like it does, go check out that article. That being said, this fragrance was not sent to me. I did purchase this. I didn't purchase it full price. There was somebody who had this fragrance and they were selling it. And I was super interested in this brand. And to be perfectly honest, the fragrance that had me the most interested in the entire line was this one. So I did purchase this, but it was not sent to me to review. They don't know I'm doing this review. I'm not affiliated with them at all. And I did not reach out in any way and tell them I was doing this review. I kind of wanted this to be insular and just completely me on my own doing this because I do have some very real things to say about this fragrance. So this is Sacred Water from The Harmonist. And for 1.7 ounces, it's $285. So this is an expensive fragrance. Do keep that in mind when I do this review. But that being said, let's get into the review. I'm also gonna timestamp below because I kind of go into like this weird disclaimer where the review starts so you guys don't have to sit through my crazy disclaimer opening if you just wanna get to the juice. Now the nose behind these fragrances is Julian Flavini. And I think I pronounced that right. If I didn't, please forgive me. He's the nose behind a lot of fragrances from Armani Privé, Tom Ford, and Comme des Garçons. So he has a very distinguished nose. I don't know the exact fragrances that he's done, but I will link, I will write his name below and I will also link some of his more popular fragrances so that you can have an idea of his talent. So let's talk about Sacred Water. Now this is on their website described as being captivating, essential, and mystical. And I'm just going to read you the first kind of like two sentences 
from the descriptive little blurb about this fragrance and then we'll get into the notes. It's supposed to be a calm yet powerful, comfortable yet startling. This perfume reflects the ocean. So this is supposed to be sacred water. It's supposed to be life-giving water. It's supposed to be mythical, otherworldly, and definitely not something that you've smelled every day. Something else that I remember from the article is she kind of was talking about how she doesn't like fragrances that are one size fits all. So these are not in any way supposed to be mainstream. So the top notes in this are peppermint, iodine notes, and aldehydes. The, uh, the middle notes or the heart notes are seaweed, algae, and marine notes. And at the base you have cedar, grain, gray, amber, and ozonic accord. Now when I first um, sprayed this fragrance when I got it, it smelled pretty much like how I imagine mineral water would smell. It was definitely, it smelled damp and musky and it had this kind of like, I would say ozonic feel to it. And it just smelled like a cave. Like have you guys ever been like cave exploring? Like you went to those like um, national parks and they like have the caves you can walk through and there's wet and there's a waterfall. That is what this smelled like in the opening. Now I'm wearing it now and it still smells like that. If you can imagine a fragrance that smells dry and dusty, and a little bit minerally and damp, that is what this fragrance smells like. It is a very startling fragrance in the opening, especially if you weren't expecting something that smelled like this. When you see marine notes and cedar and amber and peppermint, you might be expecting something like Viking, but it is in no way like Viking. And I really appreciate and enjoy the journey that this fragrance takes me on. It is not an everyday fragrance. It's not a safe fragrance for the workplace or anything like that. But there is something startling and really beautiful about how musty and damp and kind of minerally this smells. It smells like how you would expect mineral water to smell. If you were to put a smell to mineral water, it's what it smells like to me, and I really, really love that. There's a little bit of coolness and crispness in the background from the peppermint, but that is very short-lived. It lasts about, I'd say, 45 minutes, and then most of the time you're left with this like ozonic, really damp, musty, dusty, minerally accord or fragrance or just scent on your skin, but there's something about it that's really attractive, something about it that really works. And I think that that has to do with the amber and the cedar and the marine notes in there, because I think when we're thinking of marine notes, it's a note that we're kind of comfortable with. We're kind of comfortable with peppermint and cedar is something that we all know. So because it has some notes that are familiar in the background, it kind of gives this fragrance a little bit of grounding and doesn't let it go completely out of control with the avant-garde. It's so bizarre how it's like dusty and dry and damp and cool and a little bit warm. It's just, it's really a remarkable fragrance and it's definitely experience. So I'm saying all these words like mineral and dusty and damp and mildew, but it comes together in this really startling, beautiful fragrance that I really, really enjoy. So it is definitely avant-garde. It's definitely more on the conceptual artistic side. So that being said, where would you wear this fragrance? Well, I feel like this is a fragrance that might be really awesome to wear if you were going someplace and you were meeting other people who are interested in fragrance and you wanted to wear something different and unique. If you wanted to make an impression with your fragrance, this definitely would be it. I don't think this is a compliment grabbing fragrance, but this is a fragrance that's going to start a conversation. So if you're going to an environment and you wanna start a conversation with your fragrance and yourself, I definitely think this is it. People will ask you what you're wearing. They're not gonna ask in a positive way, but they're not gonna ask in a negative way either. They're gonna be very intrigued and curious, and I feel like this fragrance is going to start a lot of really wonderful conversations, especially if you're talking about it and you're interested in this line and this fragrance because you're interested in the artistic avant-garde side of the fragrance community on fragrances in general. Really it's interesting and worth checking out. I would not buy these fragrances blind. And unfortunately, I haven't tried anything else from the line. I'm really intrigued and I might order a few samples or any, or maybe I'll purchase a bottle, I don't know. 
but I can say with all honesty that this is definitely an experience. And if you do like interesting conceptual avant-garde fragrances, it's worth checking out. Now this does last on the skin a pretty good amount of time. I get about six to eight hours and it has moderate sillage. So it does perform pretty well. So overall, I would not recommend this fragrance as a blind buy, and I would not recommend this fragrance for the work environment, but if you're looking to start a conversation with your fragrance, if you're looking to add some beautiful avant-garde conceptual fragrances to your collection, um, so far, this fragrance is outstanding, and I genuinely really love it, but it's definitely not for everyone. So if you have a chance to get a sample, or if you live in the LA area or in Paris, definitely go to the boutique and check them out. The boutiques are gorgeous. So yeah, that ends my review on the Harmonist Sacred Water. Again, I just kind of want to reiterate, this wasn't sent to me, I haven't contacted them at all, but I generally love kind of somewhat bizarre bizarrely beautiful conceptual fragrances, and this definitely fits that category. So it is my cup of tea. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any experience with the Harmonist line or Sacred Water in general, I would love to know your thoughts. As always, guys, if you like these videos, remember to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe because it's free and I'm free. I put out new videos every Monday through Friday, sometimes on the weekends as well. So always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time.